Hello and welcome to Mobility Mastery Monday. I'm Alicia and this is the place to be if you want to lose the pain, lose your fear of pain, learn to trust your body, and do what you love for life. Have you ever fallen face first either hiking, skiing, maybe trail running, or just walking down the road and some beautiful person caught your eye and tripped you up? <laughs> no matter the cause, you can end up the next day feeling super, super sore in the back of your neck, uh, your whole posterior chain, sides of your neck, and maybe even turning your head is difficult. So whatever the cause, today I wanna to help you address something I'm calling reverse whiplash. So I'm gonna give you a technique in a minute here, but it's really important that you know why you're doing this one, and if it's not appropriate for you, I don't want you doing it. So what do I mean by reverse whiplash? Well, um, this actually happened to me a week ago, and it's what made me come up with this technique that I now wanna give those of you in a similar boat. I was hiking with my man, Stefan, and we were um, hiking on a pretty snowy trail. It had snowed a few days before, um, and I brought micro spikes with me just in case um, the trail was a bit icy and uh, I just kept them on the whole day even though it's actually a beautiful day and I probably didn't need them But we got to this narrow section of trail and so my steps were probably a bit narrower than they needed to be And one set of spikes caught the other and my feet literally got tied together as I was trying to take a step and that forward momentum meant that I basically did a face first <laughs> face plant on the ground um, but luckily I ended up doing like basically a perfect low plank where my face came about you know this close to the ground I did not hit the ground and one of the reasons for this is that my posterior chain contracted really tightly and powerfully in that moment to protect my face um, my skull my neck um, from potential injury uh, or worse so um, this is different from traditional whiplash in the sense that traditional whiplash, as we know it, um, happens during car accidents, uh, maybe taking a fall, um, skiing as well, but it's a little bit different. It's when something, some force, like usually it's a car hitting you, is throwing you backwards, and just so that, so that your neck doesn't snap back, the whole front of your body basically contracts really tightly to protect you and bring you back into a neutral position. So this opposite or reverse whiplash is when you're falling forward, um, about to hit something in front of you, the posterior chain is gonna contract tightly to protect you from smashing your face into the ground, basically. So if you're actually experiencing traditional whiplash right now, I would absolutely not recommend doing what I'm about to show you. If, however, you have what I'm talking about, this kind of posterior or reverse whiplash, then this is absolutely something you're gonna to wanna to try um, as soon as possible, actually. Like, the first day would be appropriate, even though you might not be feeling sore yet, but definitely the next day if you wake up like I did with a very, very, very sore neck, it being hard to turn left and right, um, that kind of thing. So basically what we're gonna target here with the technique I'm about to show you is all those little posterior muscles um, of the cervical spine and some of the bigger ones as well. That includes the SEMs, kind of peripherally or laterally, uh, as well as levator scapula and upper traps and the splenius muscles, and that's just to name a few actually. Um, and then we're also actually targeting the cervical spine itself uh, with a gentle traction. Um, now you might not actually feel this like other traction devices, um, but it does actually traction the cervical spine and potentially your entire spine if you choose to do that portion of the technique I'm about to show you. So you're going to need some kind of ball like this. This right here is a medicine ball. Um, it's four pounds and most sporting goods stores have them. A lot of gyms have these as well. Uh, you definitely don't want a hard ball that's gonna not feel good on your neck. Um, so no baseballs, no softballs, um, no hard medicine balls. Um, this is pretty perfect because it's hard inside, um, but it has some give. So I can actually almost mold it to my neck um, between the floor and my, the weight of my head when it falls back onto it. It's gonna mold to my neck a bit. So this is an ideal tool. If you can find one, go find one and use it. And then you're also gonna need a foam roller. And my pick for this technique is actually 
Um, this soft foam roller right here, you don't absolutely have to have one to do this technique, um, but it does help give you a few options for the traction and putting weight or compression onto the ball. Um, and I like a soft one because we're not actually using the uh, foam roller for a technique here. It's just to support your low back or tailbone, so I want it to be somewhat comfortable. So we're gonna be on the floor for this one. Um, just start with the foam roller kind of wedged between your butt and your feet, and we're gonna place it in the right spot in a minute. Um, and then you want the ball at the back of your skull where your cervical spine or your neck meets your head. So we're actually targeting the muscles that are way up high there, close to your skull. Um, and then we're gonna work our way down. So just kind of wedge that right in there. And then you're going to lift up and rest your tailbone and low back or whatever feels comfortable onto this. The purpose of this technique is not to go after the low back here. So this should just be resting and feel good. If it does not feel good, don't do it. If you have low back issues, don't do this um, part of it. You can certainly do it with your feet down and, and just modify it for yourself. So once you're up there, you might need to reposition the ball a bit. Um, it's really important that you don't put this ball on the big vertebrae um, at the base of the neck. So once we get down there, we're stopping. Um, we're gonna start high and work our way down towards it. Um, so the options here are knees going to 90 degrees or straight up. And it's basically your choice as to whatever is comfortable for you. If this is too much for your abs, it's engaging you too much and you can't think about what you're doing with your neck, either lower your feet or go all the way down. Um, but the options that we have here with the knees or legs up is actually tucking the tail. So I basically just sucked my abs in to create a flatter back. And what that does is it lengthens the low back and the rest of the spine as well. And then we're going to engage the cervical spine into a slight traction here too by tucking the chin. And when you tuck the chin, you're going to feel the compression onto the muscles, the soft tissue around the neck. And that's actually what we're targeting here in addition to the spine. So once you tuck your chin, you can play around with untucking it and retucking it, which is gonna kind of act like releasing the tissue a little bit, massaging it, we're not really releasing fascia here a whole lot. We're not trying to necessarily pin and stretch it. We are a little bit, but this is more just meant to be a feel good um, technique to contact the tissues of the cervical um, spine and uh, the muscles around it. So this should actually feel really good. Um, so you could give a few tucks and untucks with the chin, um, and then you could kind of rock your head side to side. So it's kind of like giving all those muscles a really nice little massage. Um, you could turn your head to one side and then tuck your chin down and raise it up um, towards the ceiling, down and up. Now that portion is going to be really good for those of you who, like me, maybe fell and woke up the next day with a very sore neck where it was hard to turn your head from side to side without pain in the soft tissue. Um, so you could do it on one side and then make sure to go the other and do it as well. Um, and then I would maybe like move it down. If you like legs in the air, keep going that way. But now I'm going to show you a different option. Um, so I'm actually going to grab the foam roller with my arms and create the opposite movement with my hips. So I'm going to actually arch uh, my back. Now if this doesn't feel good on your low back, again, don't do it. But what this does is it actually puts a little more weight into the neck. And then again, you would, same things, tuck and untuck your chin, rock back and forth, maybe turn and go up and down. And it's really your choice which of these two you want to do. And if neither of those feel good, like I said, just come back to feet on the floor, maybe just do away with the foam roller and just focus on the neck. You could grab the ball with your hands just to hold it in place as you tuck and untuck the chin and go side to side. And then you would move it down just a little bit, not a lot, and get some of those little multifidi muscles in between um, the cervical spine there or alongside it. Um, you can work it out by moving your neck from side to side. Um, 
I mean, anything is up for grabs here. I was actually playing around when I invented this as to what felt good to me the day after. And I was even just kind of like using it to massage my head <laughs> and my ears. So honestly, like, don't be afraid to just play around and do something that feels really good to you. Okay, so you can stay on there for as long as it feels good to you. I would maybe recommend like after a couple minutes getting up and moving around and just seeing how your head and your neck feels before going for more time. But this really isn't, like I said, a fascial release technique. It's more of like, we're trying to contact those tissues, contact the nervous system. Um, a lot of the time trauma can get stored in those tissues that contract really tightly and we're just trying to like help them chill out and relax and feel a little loved up. Now obviously, if you haven't had a recent fall, you can certainly try this as well. I just wanna give you a few words of caution here. Normally for me, the front of my neck is extremely tight and I actually need to pay far more attention to the front, like my SEMs um, and uh, scalenes here, uh, because I'm out of balance that way. My front is usually tighter than those back muscles in the cervical spine anyway. Um, so in a normal scenario for me, I would wanna pay more attention here and actually not so much attention here. Um, because of this fall, it was the reverse. So if you've actually had a, a recent fall, like me, and the back got sore, then you'll want to only do the back and actually ignore the front because you're basically trying to bring balance back into the body um, front to back. If you have not had a fall and you're normally tight on the front, you absolutely can do this one. Just make sure you're giving the front of your body some love as well. That means those SEMs and scalings to name a few. Um, now again, if you've had a fall like me, this isn't a one-stop shop to take care of the issues. So if you wanna do something a, a more general over body tune-up for yourself, you're gonna wanna include more techniques. So a couple of go-tos I would give you that worked really well for me would be releasing your triceps, uh, maybe going into your rhomboids, um, definitely your upper traps, uh, and potentially some other upper body areas as well, but those would be my top three picks. So give this a try and let me know what you think of it. I found this extremely useful for me and I was really happy to invent it and offer it to you guys as a result of my fumble on the trail. Uh, let me know what you think of it, please. And of course, if you like this video, maybe give us a thumbs up here on YouTube or share on social media. And if you want new episodes emailed to your inbox, you can sign up for our free newsletter at mobilitymastery.com. And of course, you can subscribe here on YouTube as well. As always, I hope you're learning to trust your body so you can adventure through life with confidence.